Hi, I'm Mike Logan. Welcome to my mastery journey. Today I'm going to go over our contents of course listings, the course goals, our industry leaders, clubs and organizations, personal learning network, our full sale community, mentor qualities, timeline, a summary, and then our references at the end. First, the course listings for the Mobile Gaming Master's of Science degree are as follows. Mastery, Personal Development and Leadership, Computer Science for Engineers, Approaches to Game Design, Game Development Frameworks, Agile Software Engineering, Usability Engineering, Mobile Gaming Business, Storyboard and Game Design, Mobile Game Development 1 and 2, and Mobile Game Testing. And it will be concluded with a mobile gaming thesis, technical writing, and professional presentation. The first course, Mastery, Personal Development and Leadership, will have the following three goals. To build emotional and social intelligence, to establish leadership knowledge outside of technology, and to reaffirm why I'm here, and to reestablish confidence. The strategy I will use for building emotional and social intelligence is to see yourself as others see you. I will accomplish this by practicing this at work and leaning on current leadership for practical application. This will be provided by my current owner and general manager, Mark Lazarus and David Milton. In order to establish leadership knowledge outside of technology, I'm going to synthesize all forms of knowledge, the universal man and woman. I will lean on the LinkedIn Leadership Podcast of General Stan McChrystal in order to accomplish this goal. The goal to reaffirm why I'm here and to reestablish confidence involves letting go of the past and the adaptation strategy. To revisit and update the unfinished capstone from 2014 that I created, I will go back and, and relearn some of these concepts that started me on this mastery journey. The course goals for computer science for engineers are as follows. To reboot the coder brain, to advance knowledge and algorithms, and to create first mobile production mobile applications. In order to reboot the coder brain, I will find my way back and use the life or death strategy by revisiting my Java 1 and Java 2 notes that I received in 2003 as an early adopter of Java. The goal advanced knowledge and algorithms will be achieved by transforming myself through practice. I will use the LinkedIn learning very heavily and go through the introduction of data structures and algorithms. I will then create my first production mobile application by connecting to my environment and primal powers at my current job at Broadway Grand Prix. I will use the LinkedIn learning and become an Android application developer. For the course approaches to game design, I will first start by beginning designing mobile game mechanics, followed by building knowledge in player-centered design, and then focusing on the gamification for training. In order to begin the designing mobile game mechanics, I will connect to my environment and the primal powers at Broadway Grand Prix, and I will look at the defining game mechanics article by Sakart. I will then focus on building knowledge and player-centered design and submit to the other the inside-out perspective. For the game development frameworks course, my goals will be as follows. Expand knowledge of gaming on blockchains, to learn Unity to certification level, and learn Angular to certification level. I will achieve these by internalizing the details, the life force, and lean on the LinkedIn learning training, advance your skills in the blockchain. This will get me experience understanding in Decentraland and how that operates using the blockchain for gaming. I will then learn Unity to a certification level by playing to my strengths with the previous experience I have in Unity, and I will lean on the LinkedIn training prepare for Unity certification. My final goal for this course is to learn Angular to certification level as well. I will play to my strengths 
as I have used Angular previously very quickly, and uh, I will use the LinkedIn Learning to become an Angular developer. For the Agile Software Engineering course, I'm going to return to my origins in project management. I will define Agile user stories for my capstone project and, and revisit some of these capstone port, the capstone portfolio that I created in 2014. I will then compare and contrast the enterprise and mobile aspects by widening my vision and having a global perspective. I will compare the previous experience I have in enterprise software with the new education I receive in mobile gaming agile development. I will achieve this by using the LinkedIn Learning Master, Master Agile. In the Usability Train Engineering course, I have three goals. Develop game prototype, to gather peer feedback, and to create usability multivariable decision matrix. Now, to develop the game prototype, I'm going to have to transform myself through practice. I've never built a game prototype before, so I'm going to have to go back and look at the capstone that I created with the design ideas that I had for a game called Morality. This is where I will go back and, and understand how the, that prototype can be developed and to start work on that. I'll then gather peer feedback based on that to submit to the other and the ins have the inside out perspective. I'll obtain user feedback analysis from family and friends to achieve this. I'll then go to the creating a usability multivariable decision matrix and play to my strengths. As a data expert, I have learned how to go back and make decisions based on a multivariable decision matrix learned from a previous course called Organizational Change Management taught, taught by Dr. Kirk Parker in 2014. In the mobile gaming business course, I will learn three goals. Protect intellectual property, create business model, and establish a financial plan for its stock, my personal business. I will protect intellectual property by suffering fools gladly. I will use the LinkedIn learning, understanding intellectual property, to learn more about the intellectual property and the legal bounds of mobile gaming business. I will then create a business model and fine tune that business model to achieve the high end. I will revisit the capstone business model that I've created in my previous capstone and uh, modify those business models based on 2020. I will then achieve the goal establish financial plan for its stock by going and revisiting this capstone and looking into the Educated Warrior project that I want to use as a business model and financial model to pay back student loans for veterans when they have not received the education that they have earned. In the storyboard and game design course, I will then expand on the designs uh, knowledge that I've received in the previous design course and extend that into storyboarding and creating uh, wireframes. I will provide and receive constructive criticism and craft the appropriate persona to make sure that I'm not offending anyone and to understand that I am able to be criticized as well. I will research the trait in interpersonal vulnerability attitudes, beneficial effects of constructive criticism on failure responses in an article by Torciello and Hart in 2019. I will then create scripts for morality video game that I plan on building for my capstone. I will allow for serendipity to take over at this point and see where this goes. I will use the LinkedIn Learning Unity Level Design course to expand on my abilities to create scripts, which is a new concept for me. I will final, then finalize my initial storyboards and wireframes from morality and internalize those details that have been in my brain for a long time. I plan on revisiting the capstone and understanding how this morality game will then come to life. In the mobile game development one course, we're going to create a starter project, but I plan on creating a starter project for all of the projects that, that deal with mobile applications in my capstone from 2014. I plan on alternating the mind through the current and expanding on these projects uh, in a way that actually starts a starting block for each one of these projects so that I can revisit them as time permits. I will then develop my first version of my first mobile game, Morality, by revisiting the capstone Morality uh, project and transform myself through practice by actually getting into the code 
and finally creating the game that I've wanted to create for a long time. I will then iterate on that first version by creating a new feature and internalize these details that I've, I've uh, exp looked forward to expanding into this morality video game. I will then revisit my capstone and make sure that I'm heading in the right direction before ex continuing on to the next course. In the Mobile Game Development 2 course, I will then iterate at least one new feature into each starter project. I'm going to make sure that I keep it simple and find the low-hanging fruit by revisiting my capstone, particularly in the morality project, and widening my vision to a global perspective and understanding where, what direction I need to go and how to prioritize my new features. I will improve on performance of each starter project by learning about the memory, processing, and usability and expanding on one of, at least one of those three topics for each project. I'll transform myself through practice by actually getting into the code and, and expanding these projects. I will then secure and finalize morality from testing by widening my vision of the global perspective. I will look into the LinkedIn learning, become a certified cloud security professional to expand on my cybersecurity background and apply that to my new game. In the mobile game testing course, I will then try to break someone's game and allow them to break mine. I will play to my strengths, which is testing and breaking things. I learned how to test things a long time ago in the Air Force, and I look forward to trying to break things in a constructive way so that they do not get broken once they're in production. I will achieve this by using the LinkedIn learning and improve on my application security testing skill sets. I will then produce an analytical report for morality and transform myself through practice and using the fingertip feel. I will revisit this capstone in morality and expand on this analytical report in further courses as time permits. Finally, I will learn Appium and Solarium, which are two testing tools for mobile gaming. I will widen my vision in the global perspective and use the LinkedIn learning for Appium and Selenium at Solarium in order to achieve this goal. Finally, I will wrap up this course work with the Mobile Gaming Thesis, Technical Writing and Professional Presentation course. By establishing the competency in game presentation, improving my technical writing skills, and presenting and first publishing my first game morality, I will achieve the goals that I have, the larger goals that I have set for myself in this program. In order to establish competency in game presentation, I will submit to the other and use the inside out perspective to understand how to speak to people. And I'll use the LinkedIn learning developer presentation skills to enhance my presentation abilities and present my project. In order to improve technical writing skills, I'll lean on the LinkedIn learning learn API documentation with JSON and XML course and play to my strengths and supreme focus of, of technical abilities and technical writing. I will then present and publish my first game by widening my vision in a global perspective and understanding how I can present this in a way that other people understand. I will do this by create, looking at the LinkedIn learning video and create my own LinkedIn mobile videos in order to publish my game. In my research on industry leaders, I found the following leaders particularly advanced in their fields, which have, are very relatable to my goals in this program. One is Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy, who perfected training for computer-based training. Another is David Keimer, the CEO for iRacing.com. His gaming development platform has produced a gaming experience that takes it to the next level for racing. I want to take that and enhance that by merging that with reality. Then there is John Hunt, the CEO for Niantic, the creator of Pokemon. He's created a, a game that merges uh, augmented reality with reality and allows people to also gain fitness, which I thought was very productive in a way that actually creates fitness for people uh, in a way that, that uses gaming to make people think that they're, maybe they're not actually getting fitness when they really are. Another is Frank Jabot. He is the CEO of Zynga, another well-respected game development company. 
Then we have Eric Novikovich, the founder of Club Speed. This is a person I met a long time ago that I was very impressed with their product, and we ended up implementing their product at Broadway Grand Prix for the timing system. And I look forward to integrating that timing system with my game. Esteban Ordano is the founder of Decentraland, and he has created a digital world on the blockchain that I would like to build onto as well. In my research on clubs and organization, I found the following organizations to be particularly of interest. The International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, IAPA, is involved in the amusement parks and family entertainment centers, which is my target business market that I would like to apply mobile gaming to. Another is the International Game Developer Association, the mobile gaming association that is international and, and, and the most well-respected gaming association that I would like to join. Another is the Decentraland, Decentraland Project, which is for blockchain gaming, and I would like to join the game development community, which is plugged into the Ethereum network. You also have the Technology Association of Georgia, also known as TAG. This is an organization that I started as a member in my previous master's degree, and I would like to extend my membership with TAG and work through their organization for networking purposes. Finally, we have the Myrtle Beach International Technology and Aerospace Park, MBITAP. They're involved in technology and aerospace, and they have been working for about two to three decades to expand into the old Myrtle Beach Air Force Base which was promised to create year-round jobs for many of my friends while I was a young person. When I left the beach, I planned on returning and bringing year-round employment with me. When I determined that this was the right place, it's now in my backyard where I live, and I would like to now expand on my It Stop uh, business and create a presence there as this ITAP expands. As I studied my personal learning network aspirations and, and what I really needed, I found some of these people to be particularly helpful uh, in the past and also people that I plan on leaning on as I expand into mobile gaming. Uh, Niantic, iRacing, and eSports are three companies that I admire for their abilities to, to advance beyond uh, normal gaming and to set the bar, so to speak, and to create a standard for gaming regardless of the platform, but they're also heavily involved in fitness and racing and sports in a way that I would like to also uh, be involved in. Another uh, leader that I admire is Jason Centron, the founder of Discord. What he's done is, is create a business, and while everyone says, hey, don't sell out, don't sell out, don't sell out, he didn't sell out. He sold his first business and created something even better which is also a framework that, that created opportunity and communication for a lot of introverts who typically would not be communicating. He also opened up networks of, of, uh, networks of networks concept by allowing people to create their own. I think that was a, a very cr critical decision in their engineering. Finally, we have Paul Weil. Paul Weil is my uh, previous supervisor in the US Air Force and a principal engineer at Red Hat. <clears throat> he is also uh, extremely brilliant. Uh, if you call him a genius to his face, he'd probably laugh, but everybody knows him as a genius. So uh, I'm going to lean on him. He's one of my personal mentors, personal references. Don't get to see each other as much as we like to, uh, but I plan on changing that now that I'm uh, getting into mobile gaming. We also have General Stan McChrystal. This is a leader of my past that I've learned from that is the co-founder of McChrystal Group and started a recent podcast that I, I plan on following. Uh, we also have a family friend, Matt Setti, who is an engineering uh, and a leader, a software engineering manager at Omnicell. Uh, this is a person who uh, I haven't really gotten to hang out with and meet and talk, but uh, I, I know we have a whole lot of mutual interest and I plan on working with him to, uh, to learn and, and, and grow in this field. We also have a, a person who I reached out to in LinkedIn and, and linked up to. Uh, his name is Sergi Sergienko. 
is a leader in the blockchain space, uh, the CEO at Chronotech, and uh, I've noticed that he's been making a lot of movements lately in, in this space. Um, I have another friend uh, who is in the Air Force with me named David Parker. Uh, he's uh, the first person that introduced me to Google. Uh, I mean, I knew what Google was, but he was the first person that used it as a verb. I thought thought then that this is a pretty smart guy, uh, and now he's telling me to go Google it. Uh, so I, that, that kind of sparked me to realize that, that I didn't have to ask people for information. I didn't have to go to the library. I didn't have to go anywhere. I could just think about what is the question I need to answer. Ask that question on Google and find the information in a very diverse way. Uh, and then go from there in, in sorting through that information. He really was uh, truly uh, inspiring to me as a person in, in uh, technology, particularly in programming. That Finally, we have Mark Lazarus and David Melton. These are the two that uh, gave me my first job, taught me how to make it right every time, and continue to push me every day to be the best that I can be. They've uh, helped me in my social intelligence, emotional intelligence as an older person, just as they did in building it as, as, at an early age. They're not, not the uh, most techie people in the world, and that helps me out to stay grounded. So uh, I go with what I call the Joe B mentality, if I have the Joe B test. If I uh, have a, a cousin, uncle that uh, named Joe B. Harris that is uh, very successful uh, in agriculture, and I learned in my, uh, in my capstone that if I go and ask Uncle Joe B, hey, uh, does, it, does this idea have any merit? Do you think this would be useful to you? Uh, if he looks at me strange, then it, that, uh, that idea is probably not ready yet. If he says, uh, well, you know, that might actually work, then that's an idea that I would definitely want to take off on and, and, and experiment with and, and toy with and see. Uh, they're those types of folks. Uh, David, David Melton and Mark Lazarus are are very common sense based, they're very traditional, but they're very mind uh, outside the box thinkers that, that, that uh, they, they can very well see if something is going to work or not. And also if it will cause problems in the future. These are the two mentors that I plan on leaning and also helping in creating a new revenue stream. The full sale community is full of extra networks and, and groups of, of uh, organizations and, and helpful people that uh, I plan on leaning on very much. I plan on getting involved in uh, some of these organizations. The one I'd really like to get involved in is the Veterans Student Union. Uh, I think uh, helping veterans is a big reason why I'm here, um, and, and I plan on getting involved very much, very heavily. Uh, others are the Amada Esports and the Coding Club, the Cyberland Gaming, uh, the Edgy Games Club, which is very much in line with, with my ambition of, of uh, gamification for training. And uh, the Extra Life Guild of Full Sail is helping students uh, or young, young children. Um, so I, I'd really like to get involved with them. And then there's the International Game Developer Association. Previously uh, mentioned that I would like to be involved in a local chapter at Full Sail. As I search for a mentor uh, or mentors, I look for the following traits. One is technical brilliance. Uh, sometimes in, in the technical field, if, you, if they're not technically savvy, they probably won't understand what you're saying, what you're talking about. They'll look at you weird. Uh, but also to go and find people that, that may open my eyes to new technologies out there that I may not have learned and may not know about. Uh, however, they must be patient. Uh, I'm, I'm an INTJ. Sometimes it takes me a second to get to my point and uh, hopefully they have the patience to wait for that as I, as I journey through my mind and try to get to it. Uh, but I'm also uh, hopeful that they have social intelligence and to help me be able to, to uh, fight that weakness and, and to be able to, to reach my points in a socially intelligent way and present those points in a way that's meaningful and logical. Uh, they must be passionate about technology. Uh, if they're not passionate about it, what I've learned from the mastery course is uh, that, that people that aren't passionate about something will only have a short interest in it. In order to have a long-term interest, they have to have a true passion. They would also need to be involved in philanthropy in some way. If they don't have a, a mind that's more about helping other people, then they're probably not going to be interested in the projects that I'd like to be in. Uh, they may not understand some of them. 
uh, where they must be a bold, a bold leader. Uh, I, I tend to lead from the front, go to the back, push everybody from the back up to the front, and then run back up to the front. Uh, sometimes that appears less bold, and I'd like to be able to learn a little bit more on how to be bold. This is where my mentor, David Milton, comes in. He's a very bold leader, uh, and I've learned a lot from him about how to be more bold. Uh, but I, I plan on finding a mentor that, that does have a boldness aspect to them. Finally, I uh, look for mentors who are executive coders. Uh, the one that comes to mind in my past uh, is a professor by the name of Dr. Court Carver. Uh, the way he put it was, I can get down in the weeds and code with you, or I can lead you uh, in, in executives and talk to the board, uh, board of directors. I want to be able to, to be around people and learn from people who can not only uh, lead and, and speak to those directors, but also to get into the cubicle and to code monkey, uh, code monkey uh, with these, uh, uh, these technical leaders that are uh, lower down the chain. Over the next year, this is the timeline that I plan on following. As you can see, I've broken it down into quarters, or the August, September, and October is more about leadership and prep preparation. Uh, in the Mastery Personal Development and Leadership course, I plan on building leadership. Uh, from the Computer Science for Engineers, that's where I'm going to reboot my coder brain and get started back into coding. And uh, then I'm going to get a little artsy with the approaches to game design course in October. Now in November, we're going to pivot into more project management and usability uh, by learning more about the gaming uh, development frameworks. Uh, I'm going to plan on learning a bunch of new tools. In the Agile Software Manage, uh, Engineering Project uh, course, I plan on learning and expanding my project management knowledge. Uh, I then finish up in January with the usability engineering by minding the user and putting my brain into the, uh, to the user's brain and understanding more about what, what is the user really looking for. Now, as we go into February, March, and April, I plan on learning more about the business, the design, and, and actually building these games. Uh, the mobile gaming business, I plan on learning more about the business, particularly in the finance aspect and, and how to market games and how to publish games. Uh, in the storyboard and game design, I plan on looking at the, uh, the art and, and the designs that I've created in the previous course and actually functionalize that art by creating the storyboards and the game design for my future game. Uh, and then expanding into mobile game development one by actually coding this game and really start building what I've been wanting to build for a long time. By May, we'll be into rebuilding and, and uh, in the mobile game development two course by adapting that game and improving on that game uh, based on my usability engineering uh, uh, education previously. Then I will get into mobile game testing. That's where I'm going to try to break everything that I can, see what I've missed, retool it, readapt it, and go back in and try to break it again uh, it, uh, using the iterative processes. Finally, I will want to present my game idea uh, and, and game, my new game that I've, I've uh, turned from an idea into an actual game and I want to present that and publish it in a way that, that uh, is actually marketable. In conclusion, my definition of mastery in mobile gaming depends on three level, high-level aspirations. One is entrepreneurship. Another is to create a revenue stream for my employer that does not exist. And finally, I want to empower others through training and education through my gamification for training concept. Finally, I want to network. And this is how you can reach me. I'm probably not going to answer the phone if you have not previously reached out. This is my LinkedIn and very quick communications. And if you need to contact me for anything school related, please reach out to me. If it's game related and mobile game related, please reach out to me uh, over the next year. Um, and if you'd like to travel on my journey, you can uh, come always go to this URL where I will continue to update my journey in my mastery journal.